Hello and welcome back to Daddy's Ride. Today I want to discuss Synology DSM 7.2.2, something we've already talked about in the last 24 hours, Synology rolling out a new update for their software. And a number of you are wondering, should you upgrade? What is there in this software update that is going to be good for you and what you're going to be missing out on other than what we've already discussed, video stations. So what we're going to do is quickly squeeze ourselves there into the top of the screen and talk a little bit more about the DSM 7.2.2. We've already got a system here with it installed and we're going to be going through this software update. We're going to be going through what's included, what's changed and hopefully by the end of this video you'll decide whether you want to upgrade towards it. Now we could spend a lot of time talking about the whole video station thing. We could talk about HEVC in video session we will certainly touch on that but because we've already discussed it in a video that went out live yesterday i believe at the time of uh, recording this at the very least um with that going out with that video i wanted to sort of talk about that later in the video and this one we're going to be talking about everything else in the dsm software update because a lot of you were just wondering is it worth hopping on this or sticking on 7.2.1 where you're still going to get firmware updates because that's really important it's worth keeping in mind if you are an existing dsm 7.2.1 user you don't necessarily have to upgrade dsm 7.2.2 is non-compulsory at least at this time and as you can see 7.2.1 has had several different updates over time and the same goes when you look at previous revisions you're not going to be forced into this or at least it's not going to become a deal breaker for many of you at least on a security and pageant update level for quite a while so if we move forward into the release notes again we're going to skip over all the stuff at least for now about transcoding and hardware updates and talk about the rest of the stuff that's included so number one we can see here added support for whether to verify uh, response or assertion signatures for saml sso clients that ultimately means it's kind of an authentication handshake in the background with regards to internal messages to verify that not only has the message not been tampered with but that that message is coming from authenticated sources at the beginning and arriving towards the authenticated source as well that there's been no message around in the middle of the file itself has not been modified there at least in terms of the messaging and correspondence there next thing is the support of customization of package installation upgrades and an installation wizard for third-party package developers now for the majority of you this is irrelevant all that's going to come down to is if you are hosting applications and services that you're hoping to submit to the Synology App Center or even some of those third-party apps that live outside of that that's going to be beneficial to you, but not much more than that. For the majority of you, this isn't even really going to be an appliance to be concerned with. If you're already using security assertion markup language for those correspondence inside or just single sign-on kind of authentication, you're going to like to see this. But again, this doesn't represent a huge number of Synology users. Now, we do see a lot of kind of bug fixy type stuff, stuff that was recognized and presumably flagged to Synology in the day-to-day -day usage of their appliances lots of kind of stuff where it falls into the cracks in between again you can go through these and chances are the majority of these are not really going to impact many people it's always nice to see Synology working on these but they're not going to be a deal breaker for many they're just little time kind of blips in between applications and exchanges that have been remedied apologies for the noisiest mobile phone in the world and finally there there is uh, patches for security vulnerabilities. Now, these are obviously one of the main reasons that you should always update your system software to the latest revision. These, once you break down into all of them one by one, you will find that the risk assessment on many of these isn't exactly game breaking many of these don't even really appear in the most recent updates on Synology security advisory it isn't to say that they are completely harmless but to, uh, we've got for example this one with the memory overload there another one with the buffer being overloaded there to allow executing of command with heightened privilege and finally you've got an open ssh extension corruption here that can be utilized to gain again elevated access but none of them are really kind of 10 out of 10 scary time they're pretty bad but again Again, they require very preset circumstance there if you are susceptible to these do i'll link to them all in the description then perhaps it might be worth looking into the upgrade just for that sake because let's face it any attack vector is an attack vector waiting to happen in the right circumstance but if you don't feel that these are going to be applicable to your own personal setup then i don't think any one of these alone is reason enough to upgrade but just take the time to look into the circumstance for yourself via those links but 
we of course have to return to that subject. Probably the biggest detail in this upgrade is of course to do with the change towards support of HEVC, VC1, even support of um, H.264 otherwise known as AVC. Now, how things have changed can be broken down into several different categories because it can be very dependent on the application in question. Much like previously, prior to this um, update, you are going to need to download the advanced media extension, which has been modified for DSM 7.2.2. It no longer applies, by the way, to Video Station. Why is that? Well, because Video Station is not a thing. We talked about it in a deeper video, which I'll link below, but long story short, DSM 7.2.2 will no longer contain video stations. Synology has made it abundantly clear that if you do want to utilize your Synology NAS for video-based multimedia streaming in the conventional sofa sense, then you're going to need to take advantage of applications like Plex Media Server and Jellyfin and MB, uh, two of which are available if you go into the third-party supported app area of the Synology Application Center. Again, you can get hold of them. It's very, very straightforward, and they are very easy to install. They require a little bit more of the applications and handling in the back end to give certain access to shared folders and give read-only or read-and-write privileges, and depending on the metadata you want to choose to use. But they are moving away from Video Station. Video Station is no longer a thing on the Synology platform, moving forward into DSM 7.2.2. Audio Station is still there, Synology Photos is still there, but even Synology Photos has had to take something of a change in the way it supports a number of its services with regard to these particular compression codecs and formats. It's also worth highlighting that Synology have updated a number of their knowledge centers with regard to these changes in a very much case app by app basis. You've got multiple articles linked in these release notes to find out more about them. But I think the main ones we have to look at is, of course, traditional multimedia. So if you are running H.264 or H.265 uh, video files there, if you're using the third party apps, you're going to be fine there, although do keep in mind that as Synology reduces the number of systems in its portfolio with hardware transcoding uh, abilities, in other words, integrated graphics, then the abilities for using transcoding is going to be limited somewhat and be less efficient overall. And that is something that a PlexPass user traditionally goes to a PlexPass for to take advantage of hardware transcoding. Now, for example, when we go through some of these listings, we can see, for example, when they go into photography and videos, they break down into each of the individual services and functions. And I would say right now, if your priority for your Synology NAS is streaming multimedia, even if it's in Plex, I would maybe sit on the fence just a wee bit longer. The reason being that Plex has only just recently rolled out an update for this particular version of DSM 7.2.2. And it's been rolled out presumably in conjunction with they've had to update towards this because of this change in privilege that Plex needs to have within their systems, ever so slightly at least. Now on top of that, we can look at some of the changes for something like photography. Now photography on the system, Synology Photos is still going to support all the traditional formats, but anything that requires server-side management of uh, and handling of HEVC files is going to be significantly reduced. This page here over on Synology's own resource pages details it a little bit more with regards to HEIC photography and HEVC media that you may be recording on your phone and uploading to the NAS. Synology Photos will become increasingly reliant on your client hardware to take care of a lot of the playback there. And if you don't have support of HEIC locally or support of HEVC, then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to view those files. You're going to Again, if you don't have the ability locally to play that file, you still don't have the ability to modify it unless you are using the Synology application in conjunction with a video player on your client device like VLC, for example, that actually features the ability to modify files. Luckily, Synology has not completely shut the door. Their image assistant add-on for Synology Photos that does improve a lot of the output of thumbnails and previews for web browser and some of the applications in the back end has been rolled out. So the recent changes in HEVC support and a number of other compressions and codecs aren't completely final, in, at least in terms of photography. 
Now when it comes to streaming these kinds of multimedia in both FileStation and on Synology Drive, again we are seeing limitations in DSM 7.2.2. Some of these already existed, but it has to be said that these new changes to supported codecs, formats and compression have made their mark. For example, here's a breakdown on their own pages talking about what is supported and possible via those two applications and services. As you can see, transcoding, high, medium, low, etc. is no longer a thing on there. You don't have that option and although you have got that media extension installed it still won't make a big difference at least with regards to streaming those services from the web browser versus the applications and again the client device will be expected to take a lot more of the load in efforts to keep things as efficient as possible on the server side. It would be very easy for me to just say Synology are recommending you use MB or Plex for a lot of these services, but I will say I'm less keen on that. If you're buying a Synology NAS, you're buying it for its first party software, you're buying it for its ecosystem, I think a lot, and Synology do promote that. So pushing users towards these third party apps is not great. But this video is about whether you should upgrade and not about criticisms of Plex and multimedia support. And right now, if you're already using Plex or MB, I still wouldn't update because you would need to update a few extra things and I would give it a bit of time while you've got a window. But what about surveillance? Because there is a huge degree of playback support required in surveillance. How will things change there? In terms of surveillance playback, there have been significant changes, some of which, by the way, if you do install this update, are going to happen without you realizing. Now, one of the main ones is if you are using cameras that record in HEVC or H.265. It's worth highlighting that if you're using H.264, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Very little has changed there in terms of Synology support. And if you're running cameras on that already, you're gonna be absolutely fine. But if you're using cameras that take advantage of HEVC, as you can see how detailed, most H.265 or HEVC cameras offer more accurate intelligent detection than traditional motion detection. Now, as good as that all sounds, what that means is after the update, cameras set by motion detection by the surveillance station, which is when you set a camera up within surveillance station and check whether you want the system or the camera, or the end point to manage a lot of the alerts, will be switched automatically to camera handling it. In other words, offloading the work of HEVC handling to the camera rather than the system there. Again, some cameras will not actually support that feature on the camera end, and therefore things will change accordingly. And this has been reflected, by the way, across a number of their systems. The DVA system, which has uh, a GPU or integrated graphics in place, depending on which unit you look at, will have, thanks to a multimedia extension, support of H.265 and HEVC already. But the non dedicated NVR systems or D, uh, NV, uh, DVA systems are going to be switched down to H.264 handling on the uh, footage with the cameras taking advantage of all of the you know, the cameras being used for all of the hard work. The big takeaway is that if right now you are taking advantage of cameras and HEVC footage and you are relying on the Synology NAS to take care of all of the alerts and recognition and stuff like that, this update will force it onto the cameras to do it. And if the cameras aren't able to do that job, are not able, in other words, for Synology systems to read the alerts that have been managed by the camera rather than the system for the sake of efficiency, the result is going to be, as they say, that if you can't use motion detection by camera, the function will be disabled and any pre-existing alerts, schedule alerts, action rules and more will all be disabled that's going to be a real pain for those larger surveillance makeups that are deeply in HEVC recorded um, feeds and this bleeds all the way through the press releases and the information that surrounds DSM 7.2.2 the brand is clearly pushing further for efficiency trying to move as much of the operations and resource consumption onto edge devices now it's worth remembering that when it comes to cameras most modern cameras arrive with support of HEVC and therefore management of alerts and the handling of the alerts by the camera on the edge is more than feasible. It does bring into question camera compatibility long term and Synology software, but that's a conversation for another day. But much like multimedia playback and streaming towards third party client devices, 
if most of your client devices were released after about 2016-17, a lot of them will already have HEVC support or VC1 support already. And it's only really budget items or much, much older devices that don't arrive with that support. And therefore, that is where the need for, or at least uh, the drive towards, edge and client devices taking over the load can be complicated. Ultimately, if you are looking at DSM 7.2 and you're running a multimedia setup and your library is predominantly HEVC, I would maybe hold out a little bit longer before you jump on board with this update. If you're running a surveillance setup, I strongly, strongly suggest double checking your compression and recording uh, um techniques that are being used if you are reliant on HEVC or if your cameras themselves are able to output towards H.264 instead before pursuing this update. I like the security updates here, I like the patches and fixes and there was a decent number of them all broken down. Also the widespread nature of this update, it's not really a tightly exclusive one, it is available on a numerous different systems. Overall, Unless you are running a surveillance setup or a multi home multimedia setup of mixed uh, client devices and mixed multimedia formats, I think most other users will can happily press forward with installing DSM 7.2.2. Just if you are a multimedia user, keep an eye on it. And certainly if you are a dedicated Synology video station user, hold off for as long as you can. But this has been Should You Update to DSM 7.2.2. I hope you found this video helpful, and apart from this, have yourselves a fantastic week.